Hey everybody, welcome back to the final update of Duke Nukem Manhattan Project and the final update for you know, the Duke Nukem Mega Threat. How about that? Uh, it's I'm over. Still... It's finally, finally over. Yes, I have no want to do any more Duke Nukem mods or Duke Nukem games at this particular moment, so please, YouTube people, stop asking me because. While I did enjoy some of the Duke Nukem mods, as you can assume, after playing nothing but Duke Nukem for the last six months, I am very much over wanting to see this tank top, jean clad, misogynistic, one line spewing gentleman for a long time. The thing is, of course, that the top, the cream of the crap was Duke Nukem 3D mods, but anything. Anything connected to Nuke is just. It's, <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, I'm very happy I decided not to do Duke Nukem Forever, mostly because I really don't want to play any more Duke Nukem, and that game especially seemed rather long in comparison to some of these other games. I will say that Manhattan Project has been unnecessarily long. Uh, the, as you can tell by the numbering of the stages, these are stages 23 and 24, and compared to, that's that's almost both of the PS1 games combined, which is quite saying a lot. And it's just wonderful that now in these last parts, if you weren't using the overpowered gun you get for beating the game, <laughs> funny story about that later, but this will be going even slower because these levels are crawling with enemies. Yeah, and these enemies do take quite a bit of damage. Uh, I guess I should explain the gimmick, I suppose, of this particular level. Um, there's this huge long tower that we have to scale around on these platforms, and for some reason or another, there's five different labs that are all connected numerically. And we have to press a button in them to demutate things for uh, reasons. There is. I try to think of some like maybe these are the primeval generators or these are the prototypes or whatever. But it's all just dumb. It's dumb. Yeah, I think uh, initially you were trying to jokingly say something about the Chinese zodiac, and how you had to goes sequentially with uh, the Chinese zodiac about the rat and the horse and all that. Except it's one animal, the rat, and then there's a cockroach, which isn't even an animal at all. Yeah, I think you, uh, I think you stated your disapproval at the fact an insect was included with uh, the term animal. Yeah, in, in high volume. And, and why did they kill them? Why did they kill them? I, I don't know. I don't know why the nukes are so easy to find on this level, or why the demutation process demutation causes the animals to implode or explode. It, uh, I don't even know why we have to shut off these labs. We could just blow up everything. That seems to be the Modus operandi for him. Yeah, yeah and pretty much. That was a lovely view of the skybox through glitching. I thought it was... Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't think they expect you to uh, suck at platforming quite as much as I do on this particular level, where I'm quite impatient. But yeah, I guess if you uh, if you happen to fall a great distance, the camera tries to catch up with you, and it just does not work out. But yeah, I mean, uh, this whole section you, is just badly thought out. Yeah, it's just uh, it's unnecessary padding for a game that was already excessively long. Uh, I, I've been noticing over, you know, the course of the recording that normally the first stage is a good long introduction to what you're going to be getting for the rest of the section, and then the second stage is normally, you know, kind of a a shorter but still very representative part, and the third stage is a short boss level. This just seems to be, the first stage was actually kind of short, and then the second stage is stupidly long with a bunch of platforming and unnecessary padding. And we'll be seeing what the third stage is, but the third stage is 
kind of the same with uh, in reference to platforming at least. It's just busy work. I mean the platforms are dumb like you said before was you don't notice your huge jump because the camera just moves back. Yeah, the, the, like the camera right now is pushed so far back, you seem you probably have actually forgotten you even have low gravity. I mean, right now Duke is actually doing massive jumps, except it just kind of seems normal because they forced this perspective of him being a bit shorter. I mean, I guess they could have done some annoying shit about having to control your jumps or you having to shoulder through without evading or some shit. Because otherwise you would hit spikes, but no, no they did. I, th I think what would have worked out better was if they put Duke into a little spaceship and forced you into a radius shooter type situation. Well, like in Duke 2. Yeah, uh, so long ago. I really, it's hard, it's hard to conceive sometimes that, you know, this has been probably 80 plus videos about eight completed games and six months worth of complete and utter poorly written bullshit and no no you know, and, and, and it, Duke Attrition was pretty good I, I have to defend that yeah Duke, Duke Attrition added a lot of good gameplay elements but obviously you know there there's not much of an addition to story I yeah. do know that the uh, the guy that did that deeper thought actually did I think it was a, a fairly good plot for a fantasy-based mod to Duke Nukem, which I think a few people mentioned to me, but like I said, I'm, I'm kind of burnt out on it. But I mean, it, it seemed interesting, and it seemed to be, you know, a larger addition than just certain gameplay elements, but, you know, I, I guess I shouldn't lump his efforts in with just the low, low efforts of uh, his, these different game companies. His was a labor of love. What, we're, what, what we've been watching now for the longest time is a soulless cash grab by people that obviously didn't give a shit about Duke. Yeah, my, like I think we've stated before, this you could replace this character model with anyone and it would still be the exact same game. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that could be easily done, and that's probably why they made the game the way they did. Because, I mean, I'm sure they were just very unsure if 3D Realms was going to pull out at the last minute and be like, Well, we don't want you to use our IP anymore. Which I think actually happened. But. It's it's a shame, because Duke, like, uh, the, I read this great essay about Duke, about how he was like a counterculture thing about, you know, not perhaps directly countering ongoing trends like with the pig cops and shit, but just, you know, giving society the finger, and, I mean, it was, if not a labor of love, at least competently executed, and that's all been left behind. Yeah, much like the, the hit DC uh, superhero Lobo. Are you familiar with Lobo? I am well familiar with all anti-heroes. Yeah, he, he was just always meant to be like a parody of Wolverine and the Punisher, but his character just became so beyond that, and then it became so stupid. I remember there was actually a crossover between uh, Lobo and uh, Mask, which was a Dark Horse comic, I think. I saw the movie, but yeah. Yeah, the, the actual comic was a lot darker. Ba basically, the guy that got the mask, um, yeah, he got wacky, zany powers, but he was viciously murdering people. Like, what, blowing them up and smashing their faces in with hammers and things like that. And it was all because this guy was just a nerdy, repressed, you know, ass. hole, basically. I, I thought he, the point was the mask what is released is your ID. And your ID is really just a huge fucking, you know, mass of uncontrolled urges and shit. Yeah. If well, I remember my Freud right. It's id. Id? I think. That's I, I think it's just called id. 
I learned it in Iceland. I have no idea how it's pronounced in English or Deutsch. Hey, I don't think it's actually like saying ID makes it seem like it's a, an acronym or something. Oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, but yeah, in this uh, this crossover comic between the the mask and the <laughs> died to the door. Yeah, this game is shit. Day. But. Yeah, uh, Lobo is a bounty hunter, and he has to go after what he thinks is the mask, because he's just told, like, there's this green-faced thing terrorizing people. And he goes through this whole time travel bullshit, and by the end of the comic, he ends up getting the mask himself and wearing it, and going around terrorizing everything in the universe. And it ends up being that he was the one he was hunting in the first place. And it was just so, so stupid. Last and... nuke. No. No. Last nuke for... No, I'm we got, we... I forget yeah, we got second. one more. We got one more level. I know you forget. <sighs> I forgot it the last time too, because honestly, that level is so long. Yeah, I'm not sure if they really thought people would not understand the point of the level after the first lab, and then they have to repeat that five times but yeah at least I, I will say the the final stage is um, less annoying it's got some interesting ideas such as I mean this first room right here it actually does uh, some interest it's almost like a ballet of lasers it's almost an original thought yeah I mean it's kind of hard to tell like if you look at the background uh, it's very much like, uh, it wasn't a centrifuge, but uh, that thing that guy was running around in 2001 in Space Odyssey, where he's like jogging around in there. You know, this part, last part, like with the laser thing before and that thing, it was... I don't remember seeing anything quite like it in a platformer, not that I'm a big platformer guy, but it almost... It was, in, it was in Super Mario. Was it? Yeah, that one, those, uh, those fire... Like fire chains that go around in circles. Oh, I guess I was just confused by laser. But maybe, maybe maybe it was in Mario Galaxy. I never played those. No, I played all the Galaxy games, but uh. <laughs> you don't? Were there not any circling lasers in that? No, they did not have a lot of lasers. But uh, did you did Yoshi eat you in like a hot four fantasy? I don't. Uh, partake of furry fantasism. Mario, get in my belly! That's so hot. No. Please, um, please stop. Yeah, we have so many other <laughs> valid things to talk about. We, I, we, could, we, we can we, talk about, like, uh, gender relations we, and blue lasers and... Uh, no, we, we, were, we were talking about before, because we... Uh, Deceitful Penguin was showing me this libertarian comic that he was having a good laugh at about gun control. And since we are wielding a very large gun, as per uh, our American rights, uh, I, I, uh, I felt the need to, uh, you know, move away from war to talk about gun control. Okay, so there's the saying I heard that the only polite libertarian society is the dead libertarian society. That sounds like it could be any saying. Well, it especially has to do with uh, their say it's an answer to the libertarians saying that an armed society is a polite society. The idea that if everyone can kill everyone else, then obviously because all human beings are rational actors, there won't be anyone using their guns stupidly, and if they do, they'll just get shot. You know, to some degree, that kind of reminds me of... Uh, there was this old... Twilight Zone episode that was made into a movie. It was based off a short story. But basically, these uh, this person is given a box with a button in it, and that and they're basically told if you press this button, someone will die. You don't know who, and you don't know where, you don't know how, you don't you don't know anything. It's just pressing that button will kill someone. But if you do press it, you'll get a large sum of money. So, the entire story is just this person trying to understand and figure out, like, you know, should I press this button? Would I murder someone? And I was just thinking, like, what if everyone had a similar thing? Where, like, each person in the world was connected by a button, 
and there would be someone else out there with a similar ability to just press that button and end your life. And, you know, whenever whenever somebody tries to bring up the idea of like, well, everybody having a gun is safe, it's like, yeah, no. Because people are unhinged and dangerous and crazed. Some people are. It's the it's the laughable idea that everyone is rational all the time that's ultimately the reason why their philosophies are mocked. I mean and, uh, and all and also that having like giving people like an active deterrent is enough to deter those people. It's like no, not really. People are gonna do balls crazy stuff either way. Like actually I was reading that uh, that Anders guy that uh, you know shot that oh, yeah, Brevik, Brevik. Anders yeah, Brevik. He, uh, yeah, they're they're now looking at his case and uh, well now they don't think he's actually insane. Yeah, I heard like, that they were uh, the reason why the insanity thing was important is because it means they could indefinitely detain him. Yeah. But now like after extended um, looking at him in prison, they they now feel that he is actually not insane. He's just an asshole. And it's crazy, right wing bastard. But uh, here problem. Speaking of crazy, um, I did want I did want to show off Wasma, the secret boss. And to get Wasma, I will. Well, basically, you have to get every nuke, and you have to get them on hard mode, and you have to get to this point right here. And this little pathway, it, you're supposed to be able to walk up to it, press down. It'll bring you this whole secret place. Blah blah blah. Um, apparently though you can only do it once per save, so since I actually already defeated it in a test run, uh, there's no way to show it to you now without having to replay the entire game again on hard mode, re-getting all the nukes, and I really cannot overstate how much I don't want to do that. It's a, it's a, it's a way to encourage you, the viewer, to ply Manhattan Project yourself. From any of your, uh, I'm not going to say, of course, that you should find some way of getting the game for free. That's of course illegal. It, it's actually fairly cheap. You can get it on GOG. Oh, well. Yeah, I think it's like I think it's like three dollars on there. But. <laughs> Money well spent. But yeah, if you, uh, uh, I, I don't want to uh, stay too much on that as we are at the final boss. I'm not sure how well you could hear over our two ramblings, uh, but there were a bunch of misquoted Duke lines going on in the background and fourth wall breaking. I don't. I, I wish I could say I cared about talking over it, but this boss is stupid. Metal, metal Duke. Yeah, he uh, he has a difficult attack pattern. Sometimes he shoots lightning at you. Yep, that's dangerous. And oh no, it's a second form. Massively different, I guess. But yeah, this time he shoots very slow homing missiles at you and lasers or no. Like <laughs> I love the fact that look at the platforms. It's like you should be moving. Except there is absolutely no reason to move. Yeah, actually, um, like once you actually defeat him, the game just kinda sits there because it expects you to be on a platform. So it won't actually progress until you hop on one of the platforms, which can be a bit confusing. But yeah, um, just one more word really quick on the secret boss. It is like it's basically just a big green orb with a lot of health. And it's a reference to a Final Fantasy IX boss called Ozma. It just doesn't make a lot of sense and actually watching me fight it would be about seven minutes of me standing in one place firing rockets for six to seven minutes straight. Imagine all the other boss fights where he stands and does nothing, except this time their boss is green and large. And takes seven minutes. Hmm. I, I'm really I'm really not over embellishing. It really does take seven minutes of just pounding it with rockets. It's uh exciting. It's just like this excitement of the final form, 
He has uh, he has so much variance. Lasers. Shit. Oh, this is anticlimactic. You know what will be climactic? Penis joke. Uh, yes. I was actually. You got you got soft. It's uh, so does Duke. Nice guys finish last. This game, like Duke, blew its load early and well, and everything after Duke Nukem 3D has been rubbish. Yeah. But hey, that's the end. And uh, we got some text. That's a pretty sweet ending. Where else? We, we will, let's just say, that's all the jokes. But yeah, um. I do apologize for there not being a credit sequence, but the game kind of bugged out, and I honestly say, fuck Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem is horrible.